this is my most favorite stereo and I have done quite a few videos on this thing. I did a video where I added some uh, speaker protection to this thing and uh, I also did quite a few repairs on this entire system in general. And uh, yeah, now it's on the workbench again for the probably fourth time now. And uh, this should actually be the last time. So, well, what's happening? Well, when I added those speaker protection relays, I ran into a new issue. Or at least it made me discover a new issue, which was looking at it pretty damn obvious. And uh, yeah, I had an issue that the sound wouldn't come out properly of the speakers or would just be complete random. Partly that was due to this potentiometer down here having some contact issues, but even after cleaning that up, um, those issues still remained. So uh, I tried to dig around a bit more and I found out that the scratch switch, or uh, just this entire section in the front here, was the cause of that. First of all, it was the scratch switch because there were some tiny issues there with it not making proper contact anymore. I mean, okay, this thing is 50 years old. Of course, the switch is gonna go bad at some point. And uh, I've just bridged this one out completely because I just don't use this function, so it's always turned off. And yeah, I don't use it because it just sounds awful. So, and uh, yeah, even after bridging this out, the issues still wouldn't go away entirely. Actually, they got worse and they got now so worse to a point that I can barely even listen to music anymore on this thing. Now, you've probably noticed that this connector here is unplugged. And uh, this is the connector that actually goes from all the preamp circuitry, all that has to do with the switching, of the volume control, the input selection, and also the uh, bass, treble, and these two switches. Uh, all that happens before it actually goes through this connector into the main amplifier, which is back here. Now there's nothing wrong with this section here, everything in here works perfectly fine. But, um, yeah, I'm saying, I was saying that the fault was kind of obvious and I knew it was obvious because just look at these connectors. They look fucking terrible, to be honest. Actually, the worst looking one is the one for the um, turntable amplifier, which is this one right here. The nice thing is the stereo is all entirely in modules. Damn. Come on, focus. Yeah, that is seriously, seriously corroded. So yeah, uh, what's left to do now? Well, I have to replace all of these connectors in here. All of them. And, uh, well, there are a lot. There's this one right here, then there's another one down there, and then there are a few up here, a few down here, some for the view meter, uh, one for the lightning circuitry back there, a few more here, and of course also the uh, uh, phono amplifier, and uh, still a few more down there. So yeah, that's uh, quite a lot. Uh, uh, this pretty much means I have to disassemble the entire amplifier, or at least get all of these modules out, and uh, swap them out for, well, at least desolder all of the old uh, connectors and whatnot, and uh, swap them out for new ones, which I have bought. I'll show you them in a minute. But uh, yeah, I mean, just look at stuff like this. This is just horrible. So yeah, of course, with uh, connectors like that, I mean, yeah, you, you can't even see it on the pins, barely, even those are green. So with connectors like that, uh, it's no surprise that I was having some serious, serious contact issues. But uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's excusable since this thing is so old, and I don't know what the previous owner has done with it since when I bought this thing, uh, <laughs> he lied up uh, pretty much about everything, about this thing being in working condition, being from a non-smoker place, and uh, yeah, because pretty much none of those things were true, it arrived completely not working, well, I mean, it would switch on and everything, but I wouldn't get any sound of it just because these potentiometers were so freaking dirty and all 
the other contacts as well, and uh, it smelled horrible. I had to actually wash this entire thing out. It smelled like a mixture of basement and a mixture of a really, really, really heavy smoker. So yeah, it also looked like that. I mean, this panel here right now is all nice and silvery shiny before it was actually yellow. So yeah, <laughs> that was a lot of cleanup and uh, a lot of work just to get this thing into the state that it is right now. But yes, now of course a new fault is taking over, which uh, I mean, yeah, just look at it. Now, um, the yellow one right here is actually the one that connects to the ground or connects everything to the ground. And uh, of course with uh, that uh, having a fault, it's no wonder that the audio is just going completely crazy. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. For the connectors I'm gonna use, pretty much the same thing you have on the MX P6 uh, to hook up your uh, batteries or lithium ion batteries to balance them. And uh, these, I think, should do the job nicely for this. I mean, the power isn't that ridiculously high that these connectors cannot handle it. And, uh, yeah. That should hopefully do, and I would have a nicely working system again. Yay! Oh, some time has passed, and uh, this is where we're at. I have replaced every single removable connector in the stereo, and all the corroded ones are in here. And damn, that is just an ugly, disgusting looking mess. This took for fucking ever, seriously. But yeah, all issues are now gone. Since, uh, yeah, some sections in here weren't making contact properly. I also found that one of the uh, speaker protection relays I had, uh, that I added, um, the relay itself was fine, but the socket it was in was just uh, worn so much that uh, every single slightest amount of vibration could cause the thing to not have is to have issues. I mean, I hardwired one relay in there just to uh, check if it's the relay or not because this was always the relay I was happening with, and now the relay is perfectly fine. So I took some new relays. These are power relays, can switch 10 amps at uh, 125 volts. So yeah. With this setup, um, I'm not having any issues whatsoever anymore, and uh, yeah. Also, these were 24 volt relays with the lightning circuitry. I got about 19 volts directly to them. And uh, the new relays in here are 12 volt relays. And since I'm running the Arduino of 12 volts with a voltage regulator down there, I can just power the relays with that too. And uh, yeah, of course, the Arduino switches some transistors, which then, of course, switch the relays. And of course, the relays also have a protection diode in each one of them. Since yeah, you need that. You cannot switch relays directly with an Arduino because it's just gonna blow uh, the microcontroller up. It can only do 20 milliamps or so per pin. And that's why you need the transistors. And since you don't want some sparks or arcing to go into your uh, components, you need those diodes to make sure that every time the coil in there discharges, there is no high voltage spike causing a transistor or whatever is hooked up to your circuitry to fail. Some time has passed, and I'm now at a completely new step. I tried to find a view meter for the stereo that would fit in here, uh, since uh, well, the two ones that were in there were broken. I mean, one of them was broken, the other one was fine, and I could not find uh, the exact replacement for it. So I just thought, okay, let's just get a new one. So I removed the old mounting system this thing had, and uh, of course I had to grind away some metal. But I have two mounting screws, uh, screw holes here that I can use. Probably just put an M3 thread in there and screw a plate on the front on so that everything is nicely to look at. Now the view meter that I got was this one. This one had pretty much the exact size I needed for this. And uh, yeah, I thought everything would be fine. I wire this thing up, hook it up to the stereo to the view meter driver, which is down there, and it doesn't work. Well, it turns out that this view meter 
is a little bit different than the old ones in there. This one has about a resistance of uh, 600 or 620 ohms, and the old VU meters in there had about uh, 1.2k. So a lot higher resistance, and uh, I've of course tried uh, some things with other resistors in order to get this thing to work properly, but that was not gonna work. The VU meter driver circuitry that is in this stereo just pumps way too much current into this thing and of course with that it doesn't work. So, now uh, of course there's an easy solution you can do to that since you have just standard regular audio rails in there you can just you can just get yourself one of these. Now this is a VU meter driver just a regular Chinese one. They are a bit pricey though. Damn this is a Disgusting looking circuit board. I have to clean that up. And uh, yeah, I have used these before and they work perfectly fine. So I'm just going to take the audio before it goes all the way into the amplifier, from there into here, and this then drives the U meter. The nice thing is, this thing also has the circuitry on it to, well, it's just direct 12 volts from the inlet to here to drive uh, the light bulbs. Now this thing here has LEDs, so I'll need to add some resistors there. And uh, yeah, with that, it's pretty much all settled to add a new v meter to this thing. Now I have to make a new uh, mount thing system for this thing. I'm probably just gonna use a 3D printed uh, template that you just uh, glue on, or either glue or either screw down with these two holes in front. And uh, that's gonna hold in the VU meter. Simple as that. Yay. So, some time and some 3D printing later, the VU meter is installed. I've used some M3 screws to mount the entire thing to the case of the stereo so I don't uh, glue anything down and I can remove it easily. I had to replace one of these screws with a longer one. But yeah, that's pretty much it. The view meter itself is also screwed on on the back. And for that I just used some threaded inserts that you just hot melt into the plastic. So you have actual metal threads uh, in the plastic. And uh, yeah, that looks really nice. Now all that's left to do is hook the rest of this uh, view meter driver up to the preamp of the stereo and then it should be done. So well, finally view meters are installed and uh, I had a bunch of issues when I was trying to get these to work actually. The biggest issue was that I had my own 12 volt power supply uh, in this thing to drive the, uh, the relays I added in the back there which are controlled by an Arduino and uh, also drive some other stuff, but I was hoping I could use this 12 volt rail as well to power the view meters and the lights of, and everything of course, but uh, that turns out that that's not possible. I mean, I hooked it up properly and everything and uh, as soon as I connected the uh, audio from the stereo uh, to the view meter driver, I got a shit ton of interference and it was unbearable because it was fucking loud. Turns out that between the ground of my 12 volt rail, which is uh, created from the uh, uh, AC rail in here that uh, makes all the lights work, there is a 7 volt difference between that ground and the ground of this stereo itself. And uh, yeah, that caused a bunch of issues uh, because they were both all at a different level. So, what was my solution to that? Well. I tried a uh, bunch around in the stereo to see if I can find any low voltage uh, power because uh, the amplifiers themselves run at uh, 36 volts so I can't use that. But I managed to find a 14 volt rail up here. I've added a tiny resistor in front of there to get uh, it at least a bit, little bit lower. So that's around 12 volts what this thing is getting. And that ground is the same ground as the housing and everything else, so I have no more interference. Now everything works, finally. Oh yeah, and I still hooked up the uh, LEDs to the 12-foot uh, rail that I have in here. 
because well it's just LEDs and those are not gonna cause any interference whatsoever. So let's try it out with a track from the YouTube audio library. All right, let's go. <laughs> see those view meters work and I'm really happy with that result. Sure it's not the same as the old uh, glowy view meters that were in there but I'm pretty sure that's gonna look really nice with the cover back on. All right the cover is back on let's give this another go. So far it looks really nice. <laughs> So yeah, I'd say that's it. Now I would be finally finished with all the repairs that were necessary in this stereo. We had a shit ton of contacts that were all corroded beyond any repair whatsoever. Yay, they look disgusting. And a broken view meter. By the way, I added the, this circuit board with LEDs on it. And this uh, circuit board replaces the light bulbs that were in here before, so of course means it draws less power, it's much brighter, and uh, they're gonna last a whole lot longer. Now, these are running off the 16 or 17 volt AC line of this uh, unit, and so that I don't have any visible flicker, I have four sets of LEDs. Each of those have two LEDs which are in parallel, but with opposed polarity. So yeah, with that you have no visible flicker, since uh, when one LED is on, the other is off, and if the other is on, the other is off. So yeah, no flicker, and it looks a whole lot better. There we go. Turn on the power. Ah, yes. Much brighter and personally I think the green looks way better and uh, nothing looks off so that's really nice. So yeah, that should be it. Thank you for your watching and goodbye.